gonna assume that you're new here and if that's the case, hello there and welcome to my channel. I'm a former top 1 Zoe in the European server and today I'm gonna explain everything that I've learned while playing Zoe for about 200 games. Just to clear some stuff, I'm not claiming to be the best Zoe player ever or something, because obviously I am one of the best gins probably in the world. The moment this video goes live I'm probably not even top 1 anymore. This badge will stay in the profile forever. Or at least I hope so. Anyway, let's start this video with build and runes. So when I started playing Zoe, I was trying different stuff on her. The airy rune that the game suggests to you is pretty trash in my opinion. I almost always go for Electrocute and honestly I don't think there is another rune that suits Zoe well. For my domination rune I pretty much always go for Gathering Storm. In the late game it gives you so much, especially with the Rabadon's death cap. It's gonna be your second item most of the time. You can go for Giant Slayer if they have a lot of enemies that are building max HP. Of course it's tanks, but also something like Cassidy who goes for a Rod of Ages. I tried Sudden Impact on Zoe and even though it's working with your ultimate, I don't really like it because it requires you to deal damage before you get the bonuses and that's not really that good. Other runes I don't really recommend, they're not worth anything. For the resolve runes, bone plating is generally the most useful one. You can go for second win if the enemy have like full poke composition, that almost never happens, so meh. Now for the inspiration rune, Zoe is like the first champion I've ever picked Nimbus Cloak on. And that's for a reason, because of her second ability that synergizes with it so well. I saw some people go for Mana Flow Band or Hunter Genius and even though Zoe kinda struggles with mana, you will build Luden's Echo, you will have enough mana to spam your abilities and not go back to base too often. And Hunter Genius is a good addition, like it gives you a little bit of ability haste. But honestly, Nibble's Cloak is just so much better early game and it doesn't fall off late game as well. Other inspiration runes are kinda meh. Sweet Tooth might be viable, but I never picked it over the Nimbus Cloak. I just think Nimbus Cloak is just so much better. Anyway, that's it about the runes. Let's go into the build and I have a few surprises for you here. The first one being Leech Bane, which is a very underrated item on Zoe. I see a lot of people build like Infinity Orb or Void Staff, the magic penetration items. And that's also the thing I want to talk about. But for now, Leech Bane, it enhances your basic attacks. And why is it good? Well, because Zoe naturally has the basic attack synergy in her kit. While doing your combos you almost always basic attack, because otherwise you will never proc your electrocute. And in the late game Leech Bane will do insane amount of damage, just take a look at that clip where I missed every single ability of mine except the Leech Bane passive and it deals like a thousand damage combined. So yeah, I think the Leech Bane is underrated, I think it's really good on Zoe. And now let's move on to the magic penetration items. Well the first thing is, how good is the magic penetration? Well, basically it just adds to your damage. And while testing the void stuff in the practice tool, you can really see that it provides you value only if your target have like 100 magic resist or more. For the item that just gives you raw damage and nothing else, it doesn't even work properly against squishes, I really feel like void stuff isn't worth it in your build. Like the void stuff is good against tanks, okay, but as a Zoe player, you don't even want to target tanks. Your priority targets are the enemy squishes, like for example the enemy Ezreal, enemy Vagar, or whatever. And for 2800 gold, the Void Staff provides less damage than the Leech Bane, and it also doesn't give you any ability haste, it doesn't give you movement speed, which is actually good stats on Zoe. You can build your Void Staff as the last item, when the enemies start to get their Banshees or Wits Ends, like when the Squishes start to get Magic Resist, that's when you want to get Void Staff, but not as your third item, please don't do that. Now let's go to Infinity Orb and why I think that this item is not for everyone. Now first if you're not familiar with the Infinity Orb passive, basically if the enemy is low HP, and by low HP I mean less than 35%, your abilities and enhanced basic attacks will crit for 20% more damage, which is nice. Also Zoe has enhanced basic attacks and abilities like it's gonna be good on her, right? Well not really, I'll explain why. So let's take a look at a few examples of the same combo, which is the basic combo, you just do your first ability through the ultimate and also plop a basic attack just to deal some damage. 
So in this example you deal your basic attack before your star hit the enemy and this time it's quite opposite. Your star hit the enemy and then you deal your basic attack. Well now let's imagine that your star deals 70% of the enemy's health. Well in the first example basically nothing happens. In the second example however your basic attack will crit because the star will bring the enemy to 30% of his HP which triggers the infinity or a passive. Well that's cool. But your basic attack will crit for that number. Let me just show you what will happen with the Lich Bane. Yep, it's almost the same, with just one little difference. And that is Lich Bane can be activated absolutely any time. You don't need to damage the enemy to bring him to low HP in order to get the crits. And also, your star will probably kill enemy regardless of whether you hit the crit on them or not, if they are at 30% HP or less. So the crits from Infinity Orb does not even work properly with Zoe's first ability. I mean of course it allows your third ability to crit as well, but let's be honest here. Do you remember the last time you were specifically executing the enemy with your bubble? I don't. Honestly Infinity Orb is just better on the champions that deal continuous stream of little ticks of damage like Brand, like Morgana, like Katarina with her ultimate. Of course there is one exception in Evelyn. Her ultimate just synergizes with Infinity Orb too well, but most burst heavy mages like Vagar, they don't even need an Infinity Orb, because they will either kill their opponent from 50% HP, or they will just kill them from low HP regardless of the crit damage. I hope you're still with me, it's time for defense items. I'm talking about Crystalline Reflector and the Banshee's Veil. I've already talked about that, when you build your Lich Bane you don't need any more damage to kill the enemy, you just need to survive their engages. If the enemy have a lot of magic damage, or hooks, or something they can catch you, like Morgana, Lux, Vagar, you build Banshee's Veil. If the enemy have like full AD composition, you build Crystalline Reflector. That's it. You can build Void Staff if there are a lot of tanks in the enemy team, but most of the time you don't have to. Now all the other magic items are not really viable on Zoe. There is a little trick when your third ability will trigger Horizon Focus twice, but that's about it. And yeah, I think I forgot to say that you always start with Ludens into Rabanons. This is like the part of your build that never changes. So building boots is not complicated. You always go for Ionian boots for some ability haste. And also your flash's cooldown will be like 30 seconds less. The other boot choices will not save you. Maybe the Mercuries can do something against like full crowd control composition. But that's about it. Now about the boots in Chant, that's where it gets spicy. Let me say it out loud, Stasis sucks. It's unreasonably expensive and there is one boots enchant that is a lot better. I'm talking about Prota Belt by the way. It helps you in your combos, it helps you chase down an enemy or escape. Believe it or not, it actually gives a nice damage. So yeah, Prota Belt is just better than Stasis in every single aspect. Even when I get the Stasis from a Balloon Minion, I almost always want to just throw it. It helps you against two champions, Fizz and Zed, and that's it. In my 200 games on Zoe, I remember Stasis being useful literally once. Most of the time it just expires in my second ability. Moving on to the gameplay, I have a few tips for the laning phase. The first one being that before you use your combos on the enemy, try to give them one basic attack to proc the bone plating, because as I've said before, bone plating can nullify your damage. You really need to get rid of it before you go for your combos. Speaking about the combos, the best way you can use your first ability at level 1 is to shoot it to the side and not to the back, because it gives the enemy a lot less time to react, to reposition themselves, to walk behind the minions and dodge your damage. The lesson here is just don't be greedy for the range of your first ability, it's not gonna be worth it if you cannot even hit it on the enemy. And most of your damage early game will come from electrocute anyway, so there's that. Now landing against melee opponents is not really complicated, you just bully him out of your lane, Try to freeze the lane under your turret, so the enemy will have to overextend in order to get the last hits. And if necessary, you can get your Prio back, even though Zoe's wave clear is not the best. Now ranged versus ranged matchup is a little bit trickier, laning against Corky or Oriana is especially painful. What you wanna do in that situation is just stay in the back, don't take any unnecessary trades that you are not gonna win. And again, just try to freeze the lane under your turret, it prevents the enemy jungler from ganking you and also opens up some good angles for your jungler to gank. Now do you go with your jungler and fight as level 3, level 4 Zoe for let's say Scuttlecrab? 
Well, most of the time the answer is yes, because every flash, every smite, every ignite that the enemy uses is a good thing for you. Like, even if you're later to the fight than the enemy mid laner, you still can turn it around because of your second ability. So yeah, most of the early game skirmishes will be good for you. Now the first objective is spawning, and what do you do in team fights? Well, interestingly enough, the longer fight does not start, the better for you as Zoe. Because while the enemy team goes kinda like back and forth, try to get an engage on your team, Zoe can just poke them with her first ability ultimate. And the longer the fight does not start, the more chances that your star will one-shot someone in the enemy backline. So yeah, one advice that I can give you here is go to your layout settings and get the do not engage chat message. Because even though you cannot guarantee that your teammates can read, it will sometimes prevent them from going all in and losing your team fights. Now the late game comes, everyone is scattered around, the only objective that is standing is Baron Nasher. Now what do you do? Well first let's establish what not to do, shall we? You don't face check bushes, you don't go near bushes where the enemy can ambush you, obviously. Basically you just don't take the risks of you dying, because the death timer is nearly a minute. It's gonna really suck if you die. So what is your role in the late game? Well, you are the best champion to stop the enemies from doing Baron. What does it mean? That means that you're not supposed to go and stop the split push. Hear me out. If you see the enemy Fiora or Jax going in the opposite side of the Baron, you do not go there. Because let's say that you are at the Baron side of the map, enemies cannot start Baron because you will just shoot them off one by one. But without you inside, the enemy can easily start the Baron and the only glimpse of hope for you is if your jungler will be able to outsmite them. Which, let's be real, you cannot rely on your jungler in solo queue. So that's about it, it's pretty much everything that I wanted to share with you guys about Zoe. I hope this video was somewhat entertaining and useful for at least somebody. Probably forgot about one or two little details, but I mean... Hey, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't all that important. Yeah, I guess. And honestly, that's it for Zoe. I pretty much completed the challenge of getting top 1 on her, and I'm not interested in playing like a thousand more games on her, it will get boring pretty fast. But new season is around the corner, and I have a pretty special champion to grind for in season 9. I will not spoil anything, I mean, not that I have too much to worry about in that sense, but still. Anyway, until then, I'm gonna be trying different off-meta picks in the mid lane, the next video will be about Pike, so stay tuned for that, and the new OTP is OP in season 9, and also, thank you all for watching, and bye!